learn some advanced, uh, slightly advanced concepts, but again, we're going to take things slow, so don't worry too much about it. We're going to learn a little bit about distributed computing. The reason for this is K-Backpack does use this uh, for a specific part of their code base. Well, most big companies use distributed co computing in like some form or fashion. Uh, if you go to a Swiggy website, uh, there isn't like one server that's running on one backend that's running. There isn't a single database instance that's running. There are a bunch of them. They all talk to each other through some form or fashion. That is what the high level goal of this week is going to be. System design of a distributed chat system. Why chat system? Because Backpack uses chat. and as you go deep into an organization, most companies, I wouldn't say most companies, but a lot of companies would have some part of real-time communication that is needed. What is real-time communication we will get to. But the systems we've built until now follow the client server model very heavily. If you might remember, ke, huh, in our case, we have a HTTP server. The client hits the HTTP server, gets back a response. This is different from how uh, real-time systems work, how we will see today. But that's what we're going to spend our time learning. More practically, we'll learn about WebSockets. We'll learn about uh, how backend systems can talk to each other. We'll learn about Redis and something called PubSub. If we get the time, we'll dive a little deeper into Redis and understand the other things that Redis provides you. Redis provides you like a mini database. It's called like an in-memory database. It gives you uh, queues. It gives you a PubSub. It gives you 10 different things. So we'll try to cover as many things as we can. But more practically, we want to be able to look at the chat system of Backpack and understand the chat backend, which is significantly different from the backend we've seen until now. That's the high level of this week. System design of a distributed chat system, understanding what are WebSockets, understanding Redis, and contributing to the chat part of an open source code base, which is Backpack. This is the repository where we have all the checkpoints for today. We'll take things slow and slowly, uh, you know, make our way up. Just to do a quick check before we start, how many of you already know about WebSockets, distributed computing, Redis? Do you already know this? Yes or no? And then we will start. So majorly no, which is great. So yeah, we'll take things slow and let's try to tackle these slightly advanced backing concepts this week. Okay, yeah? cool. Why WebSockets? Very important question. Why do you learn Why do you learn WebSockets? And why were they introduced in the first place? So WebSockets, as the name suggests, is like it is a socket, which basically means it is a connection between a client and a server. The way we have done client server connections until now is, I apologize for the white screen, my bad, um, is that you have your browser and you have an HTTP server running somewhere. These HTTP servers we have deployed on localhost as well. We have deployed them on AWS in various regions as well. We have seen that you can hit this HTTP server through an HTTP request, which could be either a GET request or a POST request, so on and so forth. You can also send some body in here. This is one way to talk to a backend server. There's one problem here. I mean, the problem is that the server can never push you events directly. You always have to ask the server for something. When this, this does become a problem, when is this not a problem? This is not a problem for simple websites we've built until now. Okay, haan bhai, we have a to-do application and we just hit the backend, get back our to-dos. But what if you want to build a real-time to-do application? Which means, what if our to-do application has a website it also has a mobile app. And the person adds a to-do in the mobile app. The website should also see that reflected immediately, right? This happens on Notion, this happens on Google Docs. If you go to Google Docs, if you type in one tab, you will see your changes in another tab. If someone types from the other side of the world, you see those changes being typed in real time. So to be able to communicate or like be able to have events being triggered in real time from the server, you need a better way to communicate with the server. More specifically, you need a persistent connection with the server so that the server can keep sending you events. Okay, oh, someone added a new to-do. Oh, someone added something at a specific line in Google Docs. If the server can push you down these events, you don't have to worry about sending HTTP requests to get back the response. There is a persistent connection. That persistent connection always, always exists and the server can push you things. Why is this useful? In the chat system, if you are in a chat system on, on whatever is it called, Messenger slash Facebook, you type a message, you click on send. What happens is either an HTTP request or something else communicates this to an HTTP server. Okay, haan bhai, someone sent a message. Let's say hi there. Let's say your friend has in another part of the world, 
has the same chat window open he should receive this specific message how will he receive it you might say harkirat we can just poll every one second send an http request to give me the top 50 messages get back the response so after one second we will ask for the new list and the new message will come here i would say that is true this is what is called long polling basically means you send an empty http request ke bro any changes that you have any time you get a change you push it back to me so you can use long polling for this you can also use another standard that was introduced called server side events which pretty much as the name suggests lets you do what we want which is lets the server side events lets the server push events on to the client so this these might feel like optimal approaches i am sure you understand why they are not ke bhai if i am polling every one second i am getting back 50 messages every one second and what if there was no change made if there was no no change made we don't really want uh, to keep asking the server every one second ke ha give me all the same messages again and again there is a problem here for this websocket as a protocol was introduced how is websocket different from http if this is your http server you send it a request it sends back a response it is a request response model and if you actually go through computer networks a little bit and understand how this protocol works under the hood you will see ke ha there is a handshake that happens if you might have read this in computer networks if you go one level below in the osi model ke ha how does http work under the hood it works on the transport layer it's created creates a tcp connection and after the request is complete it closes the tcp connection there is no persistent connection between you and the server compared to if you have a websocket server the whole goal is if this is your browser and this is your websocket server there is a persistent connection between the two which means the browser at any time can send you request the server can also send you something not a request but like some data whatever the server wants to push down that is the difference between a websocket server and an http server they are both different protocols slash standards there is some sort of interview question here somewhere ke is websocket http and the answer to this is ke it is not http but the first request that you send out when you want to create a websocket connection if this is your browser if you want to create a websocket connection from your browser to any open server the first request that goes out from your browser is actually an http request only and under the hood then it gets what's called upgraded to a websocket connection and then you have a persistent connection to the backend but this is like a lot of theoretical jargon so let's see this in action and understand what are the use cases and how and where websites are creating these websocket connections http is great but does not cover a few use cases the most important use case it doesn't cover is the server sending events or server side events what if you want to build a real time system what is a real time system the binance usdt if you go to zerodha if you go to binance if i go to this specific page this is like the current price of uh, binance the current chart which sort of keeps updating as you can see this number is updating very quickly this list is updating very quickly this number which is the current price is updating very quickly what do you think is happening do you think binance every second is sending out http requests the answer is no it has created a single websocket connection to a binance server and the binance server is pushing down events ke yellow this thing has changed yellow the price has changed yellow the chart has changed so all those events binance is pushing down to the client how can we confirm how did we confirm that an http request is made we used to refresh this and we used to see ke ha an http request goes out the response comes back similarly you can also track um websocket events between a client and a server or sorry the websocket connection so you will usually see this one okay if you the websocket connection is made between the browser and wss which stands for websocket secure colon slash slash binance dot Uh, sorry stream.binance.com/stream so this is the end point where they have hosted their websocket server and when i send the request i don't just get a single response if i click on messages you will see i am getting a lot of messages in real time ke ha bhai the depth has changed what is the depth this thing right here ya fir you know the price has changed the chart has changed all these are coming back as messages from the binance server to me which is how this page is being updated there's a single websocket connection there aren't a thousand http requests that are going out every second to update this page this is very common in real time systems what is a real time system where after you've opened a website you are getting a bunch of changes from the backend a chat application is a basic example of it if you've seen multiplayer games ke ha whatever multiplayer flappy bird or if you play minecraft with your friend or even if that famous fortnite game that people play 
all of them require the server to give you back the location of other opponents who hit a gun you know you get that gun going right next to your ear or whatever so all of these th things come back as events from the server it is never you keep asking the server ke bro what is the current state what is the current state they're all pushed down by the backend server how sometimes through websockets there are other ways to do it webrtc is also like a decent use case here ke you can actually create a webrtc connection and webrtc also lets you do data there's a significant difference like the slight differences between websockets and uh, you know webrtc is like an interview question ke when should you use web sockets when you should you use webrtc under the hood they are both trying to achieve the same thing if from your browser you create a connection to a websocket server it can send you back let's say if we're considering fortnite here so it will send you back the an array of let's say oh this person moved here this person moved here this person pressed the gun flana dhamaka you can do the same thing with a a webrtc server but like the high level difference the biggest difference is ki webrtc uses udp and websocket uses tcp which means here you will definitely get back all the events here some events might get missed so depending on the use case for example in games a lot of times you don't worry ki you need you don't need every movement update of the end user you need some movement updates even if one movement update gets missed it's fine so whenever you're getting back data at like 30 fps and you don't really care ki acha theek hai if one gets missed it's fine you use webrtc if it is something like chat ki ha bhai if a chat event gets missed that really that's really bad i i should see every chat message that everyone else is sending me then you use websockets or tcp this is a basically an interview question that may or may not get asked when should you use websockets versus webrtc this is the answer okay. if you need all the data definitely websockets if not webrtc http is not enough for something like this or even something like this what is this this is chat in whatsapp chat in telegram or even chat in backpack backpack has a chatting section if some of you might have opened it it may or may not, may not work for you because you're not we're not running all the services locally at the moment but if you go into backpack the fourth tab here is like a chat this chat requires it to be scalable real time and the goal through today and tomorrow is going to be how this chat is built and how you can understand the whole thing and start to make changes inside it and the, the way this was built was like super scalable so we'll try to understand how it is super scalable and what are the systems we need to understand to be able to make like a production worthy real time system not necessarily chat you can extend this to other use cases as well http is not enough when you need to uh, need real time updates from the backend you could either use server side events just that there's a technology that was introduced before websockets which tried to solve this problem but like didn't really catch enough heat then there is long polling can you still use http but every one second you send a request ke bro anything you have and if the server doesn't have anything the request sort of stays hung if the server does get anything it returns back some data with it that's called long polling it's like a very ugly way to do this and then finally web sockets which is like persistent connection between client and server unlike http who's like a transient connection send request get back response connection closes that's http what is web socket persistent connection always open until you explicitly close it and do all the data keeps rolling in that's what web sockets let you do and what is the ideal solution here to build a real time system it is web sockets question is what are web sockets web socket is like the official um definition web socket is a communication protocol that provides a full duplex communication that provides full duplex communication channels over a single long lived connection hopefully that is self explanatory what does full duplex mean it means client can send events server can send events they can do their like send whatever they want over a single long lived connection so you don't have to create multiple connections you don't have they are not short lived like an http request they're completely open until you close the tab or you know you, you your wifi shuts down or uh, you explicitly have to close it you move away from the trading page let's say now you don't need the web socket connection anymore but while you're on that trading page while you're on that chat system you do need a persistent connection so the server can keep telling you how data is sort of being transmitted the, the good question to ask at this point is arkira thik i understand this part ke ha this is the web socket connection how what happens on the server how does the server know ke ha there is an event i need to push to arkira or you know uh, that a game movement has happened how do you is there a single server single web socket server and then okay let's say there is a fortnite like game so is there if this is person 1's browser this is person 2's browser is there a single web socket server where this guy has connection this guy has a connection this pushes a data here and this pushes it down to the other person and vice versa is this how chat is happening are there multiple backend servers if there are multiple backend servers do they need to communicate with each other what if there is a fortnite game 
that three people are playing p1 p2 p3 first person sends his data here and has a persistent connection to this one second person has a persistent connection to the second web socket server third person let's say has persistent connection to the third web socket server if i send my data here how will it reach p3 does web socket server 1 need to send it to web socket server 3 which will then forward it to p3 or is there another architecture that is used here to make this a distributed system it is much easier to do if you just assume ki ha there is a single web socket server all people are connected to the same web socket server so data goes here this guy does a for loop it already has the connections to everyone else sends data to all five this is easy what is hard this single web socket server can't really support more than you know x number of users so how do you distribute it how do you create a swarm of web socket servers that different users can connect to different web socket servers yet they can receive events that's where redis comes into the picture and that's the second part of what we'll discuss today most probably this will the redis part we will discuss tomorrow today we'll just try to understand how you can create a web socket server create a simple chat application using it what is the concept of rooms that sort of you need to be able to understand who you have to forward this message to and we'll also if we get time uh, try to do an assignment from last week that i gave but i don't think a lot of you have done it cool web sockets in node.js is web sockets a, a node.js specific concept no it's a protocol http servers can be written in golang can be written in rust web sockets servers can be written in golang uh, golang node.js rust whatever language you want we are going to write them in node.js there are a bunch of HTTP servers out there. Express isn't the only one. There is one called Koa slash Kao. There is another one that we used when we were creating the open API spec file. I think that was using Express under the hood, but you get the idea. There are a bunch of HTTP servers in Node.js. Similarly, there are a bunch of NPM libraries that let you create WebSocket servers. It really depends on which one you want to use. And a popular one, some of you might have heard of, might be Socket.io. Now Socket.io is not exactly WebSockets. It is some abstraction on top of WebSockets it is mostly good in most cases. It gives you a lot of things out of the box, specifically like this concept of room creation. Yani ki if you know you have multiple people, P1 who's in game lobby L1, P2 who's in game lobby L2, and P3 who's in game lobby L1 as well. If you use socket.io, this specific um, npm library it lets you create rooms very easily what is a room Ki, haan, this one and this one are in room l1 this person is in room l2 that way anytime an event comes to room l1 this guy can in a single sort of line of code forward it to everyone who's in l1 which is like this guy and this guy and then there's another person who's l1 send it to this guy so socket io let, let abstracts a lot of this for you it is a good library to usually start with but it isn't used in production for multiple reasons because if you use a socket.io web backend server, your client also needs to talk socket.io and socket.io is not the exactly the WebSocket protocol. It's very close. You can actually somehow tweak the server so that you can create a, a normal WebSocket connection to a socket.io server. But your Android, your iOS, these, or let's say you have to write like a Golang application that connects to your WebSocket server. They don't really understand Socket.io. They only understand WebSocket. They only have clients that are in WebSocket. Socket.io became very popular. So someone wrote a C++ Socket.io client, you know, and Android Socket.client. But usually it's not widely used. WebSocket, the protocol is very widely used. So if given a choice, if an interviewer asks, yeah, would you use Socket.io for this or web, raw WebSockets? The answer is raw WebSockets. Why? Because it's a, a protocol that's, you know, proven and, and out there and everyone has clients for it. Someone has written WebSocket client implementation on Android. Someone has written WebSocket client implementation in iOS, so on and so forth. Okay. We are going to use one of these libraries to create it today. Uh, are present natively on the front end. So just like fetch is natively present on the front end, your browser understands fetch and uses it to send out uh, HTTP requests. Your browser also understands WebSocket. You know, it's a browser API that's available to you to create a connection to the WebSocket server. Fetch is used to send a request to an HTTP server. This is used to create a, this is the client side code for it. This is in the server side code. Server side code is different, similar to Express. Client side code or this WebSocket object is similar to this Fetch. Okay. Let's look at the code now. Um, the code for this week, as I said, is at 100x devs slash uh, week 19 BP repo. Oh no, sorry, my bad week 19 WS. So please try to clone this locally. I'll give you guys two minutes and try to open it in 
VS Code. I have it open on WebStorm. Um, I'm going to keep it open on WebStorm if you guys don't mind because Visual Studio Code has backpack right now and I don't want to remove backpack from it. So it's very simple code. So hopefully the editor is, does not annoy you guys. So two more minutes, please open it in VS Code and I'm going to wait for two minutes. Open chat if anyone has any questions, but would urge you to start to clone the project locally. Are there no servers that can do peer to peer connections like WebRTC for messages? Are there no servers? What do you mean by servers? Do you mean any protocols? So generally peer to peer is never done. Like if, if you're thinking of doing peer to peer, be it using WebRTC or any other protocol, it will not scale for a thousand reasons. So no one does peer to peer even WebRTC is sort of tweaked to go through a server eventually in scalable systems like Zoom. Difference between WebSockets and webhooks. Doesn't webhooks also keep sending messages? So they're like very different things. Webhook is a WebSocket, your server, your client, you sort of own this code, you have a connection to your um, WebSocket server. Webhooks kya hote hain? K, um, when you use an external service, for example, some of you might have heard of Razorpay, which lets you do um, payments. So Razorpay's usually HTTP server, Razorpay's HTTP server will send a request to your HTTP server. And this is called a webhook. Why is it used? If a payment of yours fails, so Razorpay is the person who has connection with banks, you know, SBI, HDFC, so on and so forth. When people come to my website, for example, to buy a course, they actually hit Razorpay's endpoint. Ke haan bro, uh, whatever, I'm paying 1000 rupees, which under the hood sort of hits a bank API. Eventually, the bank needs to tell Razorpay, ke haan, this transaction is done. And then Razorpay needs to tell my backend server, ke haan, whatever, Suman paid X rupees. So this Razorpay server, talking to my HTTP server, when you talk across companies, that's what's called a webhook. Ke haan, you go to Razorpay dashboard and say, bro, hit this web backend server request uh, endpoint of mine, which is called a webhook. Ke haan, you are sending a hook to my backend. So I can in my database put ke haan, Suman has bought the course and Suman gets access to this course. So whenever SBI needs to talk to Razorpay, Razorpay needs to talk to me. They hit my web hook. That protocol that they're using is still HTTP. So this is still an HTTP server request. Only it's happening from one company to another. That's what is a webhook. What is a web socket? It is a real time, like a different protocol, completely different from uh, HTTP. Cool, that's the high level difference. Hopefully you guys have cloned it. There are five parts, let's look at it. The first and two sort of go together. It's the backend code for a web socket server and the front end code for a web socket server. If you go to package.json, you will see, I have express. You don't really need express to create web socket servers. You can create it without it, but I have used express. There's like a way to create uh, web socket servers using express. That way you can expose one endpoint, for example, slash WS endpoint on uh, to be a web socket server. And then whatever, you can have a slash health endpoint slash user slash whatever, uh, create as another endpoint. That way only one endpoint is um, a web socket endpoint and others are standard HTTP endpoints. You can also not use Express if you want to create a pure WebSocket server. Okay? And then there are the types of both Express and WS. Standard TS config. Um, only difference is um, the root dir is dot slash SRC and the out dir is dot slash dist. Everything else is like standard that you get. And if you look at index.ts, let's look at the things that I've imported. I've done import Express from Express, import HTTP from HTTP. Now this is this is like the native HTTP module that Node.js provides you. Um, I don't think we need this either, but the way I've created this code is that um, after you do a const app equal to express and have the port, we do a server equal to app dot create server app. I don't think you really need this. Uh, I guess we need it. Yeah, so I think the reason for this is that web socket server expects a native HTTP server here that if I go here, look at the options. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah, there you go. The server argument that it expects is a native HTTP server. So we can't just say yellow express. This doesn't accept express here, which is why I had to create a native HTTP server. What do I mean by native HTTP server? This is just the module that Node.js provides you. I think uh, in, inside the box, like out of the box. As you can see, this HTTP module isn't really part of my package.json. So this like Node.js provides you out of the box. We use this to create an HTTP server by using simply HTTP.create server. I think you, you, you don't really need express. I think you can create it without express as well. And you know, there's a different way to create routes here, like HTTP.get or whatever. So you can do that as well. I don't think you need it. As I said, you don't really need, need express. I have created it this way because this is how backpack has done it. So I'm just basically copy pasted it and try to break it down. If you want to build it yourself, you actually don't need a lot of these things. You can simply, this is enough to create, I think, uh, a WebSocket server. Okay. Yeah? Lastly, I've said WSS.on connection. Oh, uh, I said initialize WebSocket server. This has all the logic similar to all I have to do if I have to create an HTTP server is const app equal to express or basically this line right here. This under the hood creates an HTTP server has all the logic for it. Similarly, this whoever has written this library has written all the logic to upgrade the request, create the persistent connection, so on and so forth. We use this library out of the box. The only sort of syntax you need to know is that WebSocket server, so WSS stands for the WebSocket server, dot on connection, any time a person connects to you, the control reaches here. Someone connected, that's what I've logged here. And then WS dot on message, any time someone sends you a message, you can whatever, put a log here, put something in a database, do whatever you want with this information. For example, in the real world, someone would send you either a chat message or someone would send you their movement if they're playing uh, Minecraft. Okay, and this is where I've moved. You receive that data here. From here, you have to run your logic and do whatever you want with this data. We don't do anything. We just send back from the server. Okay, hello, you sent this. So just to show duplex communication, just to show client can send you some data, server can respond back with some data. This is like five lines of code that you have to write. This is enough to write your server side logic. Is this what you will write in the real world? No. In the real world, if you user send you a message, you will have to basically look at who all are you connected to, forward the message to a few of those users. So you want to have ws.send, you will actually do a, you know, for iterate over all the users you have, all the WebSocket connections you have and send it to them. We will see that when we reach this part. For now, fairly simple WebSocket server. On connection, which means any time someone has created a WebSocket connection, control will reach here. What do we do here? We log, we don't have to log, we can remove this. But we just log to see ki, haan, actually connections are being made. And any time, that user now sends message. That user can send you message once, twice, 10 times, 100 times. The control will reach here. And then we, I don't have to do anything here, but what am I doing? I'm just responding back, okay, bro, yellow. I am going to respond back with, hello, you sent this. I could also some, be something like, okay, set interval, ws.send, hello from server, every one second. I could, I don't really need a trigger. I can simply be like, yeah, yellow. Every one second, now I'm going to send you some data. Okay? So ws.send can be called anywhere now, as long as you have access to this ws, which is the socket connection for that specific user. So once the control reaches here, this ws variable is the socket connection to that user. If another user sends a request, a new control will reach here again, a new ws variable will be available from which you can send back data, I think. It's fairly straightforward stuff here. Let me know if not, we'll do a poll soon. But hopefully this backend server logic is straightforward. If not, we'll do a poll, let me know. But try to marinate it. Ignore whatever you're seeing here. This is just my ID being my ID. So it's actually just async ws comma rec. These are just types that my IDE shows similar to this listener. That's a type that my IDE shows. Don't worry about that if that's what's confusing you. And let's try to run this backend server now. The way to do that as always is, oh, by the end, end the end we do server.listen port, which is similar to how we used to do it in like an express application. We used to do an app.listen, rather than doing an app.listen, the server that we're we have created, we do a server.listen port. Why is this cool? Why did we use express? So that we can do like other things like app.get slash health, expose like a health check endpoint, so on and so forth. Cool. You don't have to add it, just showing you. Yeah. Eventually, if you hit this endpoint, when your server starts, you can also get back like health checks and put other logic here. The way to run it, go into one dash simple dash ws dash server and run tsc space dash p. 
this is what will it do convert your TypeScript code into JavaScript code if this doesn't work for you npx tsc dash p should work once you've done it node dish slash index dot js <coughs> should start this on port 3000 I was already running something here but if I remove that node dist slash index dot js should start your websocket server we haven't yet written any client side logic we will like that very soon but this is a similar to an HTTP server that has started straightforward shall we proceed let me do a poll real quick I think it's straightforward hopefully because it's like very similar to HTTP servers so like nothing too fancy here just one more extra thing you get you send and receive separately okay very good so now this is in the past when we created HTTP servers we were able to hit them via postman a mobile app or a, a browser anywhere right similarly web sockets also you can hit from anywhere you want if I go to my browser and search for post woman this was someone who created like a fun, funny project called post woman which was an open source version of postman uh, and this has like a real time part i think postman also has this like now postman also lets you create a websocket connection but think of this application which is hopscotch.io now used to be called post woman in back in the day it let, gives you a section called real time which lets you create a websocket connection similar to how we used to go to postman and send http requests this is just another client and if i click on if i put if you put the right address here which is ws colon slash slash local colon 3000 if i open inspect click on the network tab and click on connect here you will see a websocket connection has been created there are no messages that have been exchanged right now but the connection has been made if I send a message here, let's say the way to do that is it sort of lets you put any random body here and send. You will see I send a, I sent a message. I also received the message. Hello, you sent this from the backend server. I can also confirm this here. So what is this? This is just another client uh, for hitting a WebSocket server. Eventually you want to own this application. This will be your own chat application, your own game. But at least this shows you how can you now it's a generic WebSocket server that you've created. Anyone can talk to it using WebSocket clients. We specifically need to talk to it using a website. So either a React application, Next.js application. So we will write a simple client in JavaScript that's able to talk to it. But like anyone can talk to it. It's an open server that understands the WebSocket protocol. As long as someone has written a WebSocket client, they can talk to it. They can send messages. They can receive messages. What we haven't yet written any logic here. In the real world, you'll be like message types here. If message dot type equal to chat, then only you forward chat messages. If it is a message the server does not understand, it does nothing. We have to do all of that right now. But just the communication bit has been hooked up. Now let's look at the client that I have written. This is a simple index.html.